Ready? Hi, I'm Bob Johnson. I'm the chairman of the Department of Linguistics and Interpreting at Gallaudet. Today I'm going to be talking about a topic that is not directly related to my work or to deafness, but which is related to my favorite application in life, which is fly fishing. Uh, this may seem like a strange topic for a more or less technical discussion, but in fact, fly fishing is a combination of art, technology, and natural history. And in order to do it well, one must uh, be acquainted with all three of these things. I've been fly fishing since I was seven years old, and uh, it's uh, become a part of my life that means a great deal to me. Every summer, I need to get to Yellowstone Park, where there are nice trout streams. I need to catch fish, and I need to let them go. I will explain all of that as we go along. The first thing that one must understand about fly fishing is that it's not fishing in the sense of looking for meat. If I want to eat a trout, I can go to Safeway and pick one out of a tank with a net, and it will cost me a lot less money than if I were to eat one of the trout that I catch in Yellowstone. I estimate the cost of the trout that I catch in Yellowstone at $75 a pound, and that's why I need to let them go, because I can't afford to eat meat that costs $75 a pound. Uh, the art of fly fishing uh, has to do with an appreciation of nature and an ability to learn enough about the behavior of an ecology that you can make a rather smart, cold-blooded animal think that it's getting a free meal. Uh, this involves tricking it with a lure that we call a fly. We call it a fly because it looks like an insect. Now, to understand why that's important, you need to understand something about the ecology of a trout stream. Fish will, a, a trout, in particular, will only live in a particular kind of water where there's a particular kind of feed. And the feed that they prefer are very small insects, aquatic insects, which have a rather interesting lifestyle. They, of course, hatch from eggs like all insects do, but their parents had laid the eggs on the surface of the trout stream. The eggs sink to the bottom and begin to... Uh, begin to grow. The insect will go through four stages before it dies. The first stage is called a nymph stage, N-Y-M-P-H. At this stage, uh, the insect looks a lot like a cockroach, but it lives under the water. It has gills and can breathe under the water, and it lives there for roughly a year. Uh, the fish love nymphs. But, and, and they probably compose about 80% of a trout's diet. So that means that the trout eat a lot of food from the bottom. At a particular day that's biologically determined by a clock in the trout, the nymph begins to, or the insect begins to shed its shell, and it swims to the surface of the water. This stage we call an emerger. It sits for a moment on the surface of the water, floating along and looking very desirable to a trout because now it's come out from under its rock and it's easier to get at. And within moments, it crawls out of its exoskeleton and becomes a different looking insect. Now it's a beautiful long insect with long tail and upright wings that uh, are almost transparent. But because it's wet, and because it's just transposed from a water-breathing animal to an air-breathing animal, it needs to sit on the surface of the water for a moment. At this stage, we call it a dun, D-U-N-N. And it, as I say, it looks entirely different from the nymphal stage. So it sits on the water for a minute, drying its wings, and then it flies into the air where it lives for one day. During that day, it has a flurry of sexual activity because all of those other friends who hatched on that same day are out looking for the same kind of activity. 
and something like a disco bar. Uh, so they do what they do in the air, and uh, then they return to the water to lay their eggs. The females come back to lay their eggs. The males spend themselves, as it were, and uh, die on the water. That kind of reduces the desirability of that particular lifestyle. Uh, the females come back, sit on the water, and drop their eggs. And the eggs go down into the water, and exactly one year later to the day, the eggs will hatch, and the cycle will repeat. Now, this is what trout eat. A good-sized trout will eat 2,300 bugs a day. But the trick is to figure out how to make your lure look like what they're eating. Back up.